What is going on everyone and welcome to the Stock Trends channel. So today we're going to be talking about ticker symbol EBON and the recent short report actually just out today from Hindenburg Research taking a shot at EBON. We're going to dive through the report, the tweet thread, and then we're going to dive into the chart like we would like to do here on the channel. Talk about technical analysis and actually why it fell to a pretty important level. And if that level could hold up as support, we'll have to see how things progress. That said, make sure you're staying tuned for that portion of the video. We're going to dive through the report first, and then we'll get into technical analysis. So if you want to just dive into the technical analysis, skip about midway through the video, and we should be at that point. Make sure you're jumping down below, subscribing to the channel, hitting that thumbs up button so you don't miss when we post videos just like this. We post videos pretty much every single day, whether something interesting happens in the market, or we go over essentially a watch list of stocks that you may want to add to your radar going forward in different sectors and for different reasons. So it should be some good information and no hype here. We're very technical in nature. So we always, always, always like to look at the charts and talk about, hey, is this a good risk reward setup before ever thinking about pressing any buttons on the platforms? So right now we're looking at tip ranks and actually there is still a sale going on, at least for today when we're filming this video to get 20% off the ultimate platform. That'll be linked as the first link in the description box down below, but let's dive over to Twitter here and talk about Hindenburg Research. So here we go. Hindenburg talking about EBON, eBay, another crypto China hustle. Now we talked about the China hustle, I believe a couple weeks ago in an SOS video. All we did in that video was go through the report, talk about the red flags that Hindenburg has raised for SOS and people took that the wrong way. This is not a biased approach. We're going to be going through what they're saying here in this report what they're bringing up as red flags so that you're someone who's more aware of what's going on here. If you're invested into EBON or if you're not and you're looking to get in on a potential short squeeze or something along those lines that certainly could happen. But if you take a look at SOS, SOS has been falling off and SOS just did an offering recently. SOS, honestly, at least as of now, price action wise, Hindenburg has gotten that one correct. But with that said, there are plenty of other examples of Hindenburg being absolutely dead wrong on a lot of their callouts. So take it with a grain of salt. Now we can actually, if you want to go here and click on their actual link, you can actually dive through a more written out on the website. It's kind of boring because there's less pictures and it's small font. So we'll go through the Twitter thread here. Of course, I'd recommend diving a little bit deeper if you would like to. So here we go. EBON is a China-based crypto company that has raised over $374 million from U.S. investors in four offerings since going public in June of 2020. So we're coming up soon on about a year of them being publicly traded. And Hindenburg believes the majority of this capital has already been diverted out of the company and is never going to come back. And this picture right here is Chinese protesters protesting against eBank's involvement in alleged peer-to-peer -peer lending, Ponzi scheme, and apparently the sign reads, eBank launders money. They point out that before going public on the NASDAQ, eBank twice applied to list on the Hong Kong exchange and multiple media outlets reported that eBank's Hong Kong IPO plans were suspended following an involvement in alleged sales inflation scheme with a company called Yindu. They go on to talk about how Yindu was a massive peer-to-peer -peer online lending scheme that defaulted on its 20,000 retail investors in 2018 with $655 million apparently vanishing into thin air and the ultimate beneficial owner, quote, fled the country and Chinese prosecutors have been pursuing other suspects associated with Yindu. They talk about how in proposed offerings or when they would do offerings for EBON, they went through and what EBON said, hey, we're gonna use this much money for this and for this. And, and what they're saying here in this next piece is that while they said that they'd use the majority of its capital raises to develop and benefit its business operations, they discovered that they directed a lot of that cash out of the company through a series of opaque deals with insiders and questionable counterparties. Now, of course, that is suspect to whatever you want to consider a questionable counterparty. On top of that, Ebon directed over $103 million, representing $11 million more than its entire IPO proceeds, into bonds linked to the U.S. underwriter AMTD, which has a track record including fraud, self-dealing allegations, and listings that have subsequently imploded. They talk about a listing that has imploded was such as MKD, a stock that actually in the recent months did pop up a little bit here, but has been on a downtrend since the IPO. Then in November of 2020, they actually went for a $21 million capital raise through an offering and claimed the proceeds would go primarily to development. And around the exact same time, the company directed $21 million to repay related party loans to chairman and CEO 
Dong Hu's relative. They claim the mining business has been failing and Ebon has pivoted to the cryptocurrency exchange called Ebonix. Now, when they announced this exchange, it added about $922 million in market cap to EBON. This actually was also just came out in a press release uh, the other day and Ebon came out with their exchange and Hindenburg's research here are their, their findings that it looks remarkably similar to Blue Helix, a popular exchange. Now, take a look at this. This is what they claim as Ebon's exchange on top and then the Blue Helix exchange in the bottom. They claim it looks very, very similar. There are certainly its differences. Of course, I mean, you can edit a page, you can edit things for sure. The reason why they claim this though is because when you dive into some of the source code, they actually end up finding Blue Helix code. And so that raised some questions or some concerns through that. And they wrap it up here with Ebon. He's got another cautionary tale for inexperienced investors. It's common with other Chinese-based schemes. The company will likely keep selling shares as long as the investors are willing to keep buying them. We think this is a clear one-way street and the capital is not coming back. So there you guys have it. There is Hindenburg's report on EBON. Now, of course, at the end of the day here, a lot of this stuff can be disputed. So we'll have to be diving through and seeing how the company wants to respond going forward. We stick in tune to that. Of course, SOS came out with a brief response right after the Hindenburg report uh, going forward. The reason why we dive into the Webull chart right here is because take a look at this. We drew this line right in here just to kind of indicate a potential uptrend that was forming here with the bottom of these candles here on the daily chart. And why it's important is because guess where we fell to today? This was not an offering, so we had a dip down to the downside based on this report because it came out in the pre-market hours. And the stock fell down here and it actually recovered quite nicely intraday to a degree. If we take a look at the one minute chart, uh, how did it do? Well, it dipped down here in the pre-market hours, fell down to actually sub $5 and then recovered up and finished the day over five fifty. So not a terrible day or at least an intraday play if you're someone who is looking for a trade intraday. Uh, obviously, we'll see how this progresses going forward. We have a gap up here towards about 625 or so indicated by this open space on the chart. That's a gap. Potentially, those gaps can get filled. And going forward, we have this line drawn across right here as a potential support resistance line, a key level to watch, 7 bucks is a key level to watch going forward for EBON. So it does look, if this uptrend can hold, EBON has you know that kind of range up towards seven, over seven, things get interesting. The reason why we're talking about this right now and why you know over seven could be a possibility is simply because of the crypto space. Many times you'll see that it doesn't necessarily matter when you're talking about a lot of these you know companies, these penny stocks or these small cap stocks, You know, it doesn't necessarily matter you know the, the backing of the company. People will trade anything they can just to make a few dollars. And so you can see a lot of these spikes. And if you're someone who's familiar with the small cap penny stock space. Yeah, I mean, these spikes happen all the time. And if you're involved in these spikes, you don't actually care about the longevity of the company. You're here to make money now. You're not here to be around for the next six years on this company most of the time, right? However, some like to go into long-term investing on in a lot of these stocks. And sometimes you hit some massive home runs and other times, you know, a lot of them are duds. And so it's kind of just a numbers game to some degree. Also a lot of heavy due diligence that needs to be done, especially with the Chinese company where there to a degree are limits to what we know about what is actually going on behind the scenes. So that said, I want to mention Bitcoin really quick. Look at Bitcoin as of late past couple of days. We can see that Bitcoin had this downtrend, breaking out of this downtrend, pushing to the upside as of right now. We'll see if Bitcoin can get back up over 60K. It seems like 60,000 is a pretty strong resistance point on Bitcoin, at least as of right now, but it is holding up here over that 56, 57,000 pretty well. So it's currently sitting at 58.2. We'll see how this progresses going forward. Definitely in the past has correlated to Bitcoin pushing on up and breaking out to new highs, which we saw by some of these spikes back in here when Bitcoin was making its highs up over 60,000. EBOM was hitting highs over $13. So definitely something to watch. The correlation is still going to be there. I don't think traders are going to forget about that correlation by any means. But if you're looking at this for more of a technical chart perspective, volume has been increasing over the past couple of days. We can see obviously, yes, for, for potentially the wrong reasons today, at least, right? Potentially people are selling and freaking out. But that said, we do have some support here down towards the $5 area. Really, I think five bucks is kind of key. Under five bucks and uh, EBON may be headed for more of a downtrend. So the technical side of things, this trend line may not be holding up as well. Under five bucks, we have a, a little dip down here towards this 485. Below 485, we have a little low down here towards 440. And then below that, we have a low down towards 381. So those are some of the key levels to the downside of EBON if it does start cracking below $5 eventually. Now, if Bitcoin doesn't want to make a push to the upside, if EBON doesn't want to come out and dispute some of what happened here or they're kind of get quiet going forward, you can kind of see what happened to SOS, a just kind of a, a slow bleed if you take a peek at this. SOS had this short report. It dips down here, hitting lows under $5, then pops back up, hits up over nine, dips back down to five, and then pushes back up to eight. 
And then ever since then, it's been kind of a slow bleeder on down. And so that's kind of the danger that you may be looking at for uh, EBON. If things get quiet for quite some time and Bitcoin's not pushing on up, EBON could be one of those that also joins the party of the slow bleeders to the downside. That's something to just be aware of going forward. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully you got something out of this video in terms of upside. I would look for that 625, then seven bucks. Over seven bucks, if it can get back over seven bucks and hold over that level, that would be pretty solid. Then I would be looking up towards eight, nine, 10 as the next targets. I think there's some significant resistance up over eight from eight to nine. We have a lot of these wicks from the past couple of months in that eight to $9 range. So that's definitely gonna be a pretty strong resistance to have to grind through. But if it gets through that, we can see a pretty big short squeeze, obviously, because now there's probably a lot of shorts in this stock with this new short report. So take it with a grain of salt. Hopefully it was helpful. If you got something out of the video, make sure to jump down below, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to grab two free stocks with the Webull platform, which is right here. We use it here every single day in all of our videos. And also that first link in the description box will be for tip ranks, get 20% off of the ultimate platform. One of the best platforms when it comes to researching stocks, finding out news, diving deeper into insider ownership, analyst price targets, and all things like that. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.